Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. I believe we are all well and we thank God that He has granted us another morning to share this message of hope and even to learn from each other. The Bible says that as iron sharpens iron, so do man. So we need to sharpen each other, we need to learn, we need to teach each other, and we also need to listen to the voice of God because God speaks in all areas. And this month, he's speaking to us about money, about our wealth, and how we can glorify his name through our riches and through whatever we earn. Now, throughout this week, we've been looking on managing our money. And we said that the first thing we need to keep track of our money or keep records of our money. We also talked about planning ahead. Because when you know what you earn at a certain particular period of time, we need now to plan before you even go to withdraw that amount. Plan what you want to do with it. We also talked about savings that once we get that amount, get a certain amount from it, get a certain percentage and save it because the future and that time that you'll not be having enough energy to create wealth depends on today. Future depends on today. Um, our grandmother used to tell us that uh, the, the old age eats the young age. And therefore, when you are young and strong, you need to be very firm and strong in planning for that old age. Now, today we shall look at another point that is helping us to manage our money. And this point talks about eliminating debts or trying our level best not to have debts. Now, nothing in this world cost, causes people misery like being in debt. When you have a debt of, a, of a someone, of a friend or of a neighbor, a time you feel like you don't even want to meet that person because you are not aware when he or she can ask you to pay back and probably you don't have that amount at a particular time. Now, when I talk of debt, I don't want to go to or to, to mean that it is is bad to have things like a mortgage where you're buying a house or going to a certain bank or circle because you need to buy a property. It's not such debts that I'm talking about because with the such, there is a lot of development that comes as a result. And when we don't go for those big loans, again, we can stagnate and not grow. Because when we go for such the mortgages and the debts like buying of a car, uh, there is a check-off system whereby you continue paying amounts that are not um, um, very uh, pressure of no, not putting much pressure on you. And uh, when we are also having those payoff system, you continue to decrease the rates. Uh, so I'm not talking about such things. And other things we know is that if it becomes difficult to pay and you had already purchased uh, a property, you can sell that property and pay that debt. Now, what I mean is that um, the worst debt is th those little debts. Like, uh, for instance, the times we are living in, there are so, so many organizations that are coming online. The moment you take your smartphone early morning, you find that people who are, who are advertising that you can come to us. We are going to give you 10,000 shillings. What you just need is to... Uh, maybe tap a certain icon and you start getting money. Now, this money, sometimes they are not uh, secured. They are loans that are not secured. They are loans that are not uh, having any collateral. And therefore, they will haunt you at the end of it all. They will not make your life easy when it comes to paying. Because the moment they tell you that we've given you 20,000 shillings and you need to pay, or you choose a debt that you need to pay, if that debt comes and you're not having their money, it is not easy. If you will not receive a thousand calls, then you will uh, have accumulation of debts on top of what you get and the interest and the excise duty and any other form of deductions. They will now be charging you daily. They can be charging you maybe 200 shillings on top of what you get. And by the end of it all, by the time you are paying, you'll be paying even double or even triple the amount 
that you used. So when we are talking about, about avoiding debt, there are those consumer debts, digital literal debts that come and they come with a lot of consequences. Now these debts, uh, sometimes you don't even do anything good with them because the moment you are in a situation where you need maybe 5,000, maybe you rush for groceries or you rush in the supermarket for shopping or in the market because sometimes they come because of daily needs. And these debts, a time they make someone to be crippled. Now, when we look at the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, because Proverbs, uh, King Solomon had a lot of wisdom on advising people on expenditure and use of finances. The Bible says, my son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you have shaken hands in pledge of a stranger, you have been trapped by what you said and snared by your words of your mouth. So do this, my son, to free yourself since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands, go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbors no rest. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Now, the writer of Proverbs is just telling us about being very careful before you accept to act as a security to somebody's loan or to somebody's debt. Now, there are sometimes you sign something because of the trust you have uh, with a neighbor or with a friend. And the Bible is saying that, my son, be careful. I also love the Living Bible translation because it says, my child, if you have put up security for a friend, debt or agreed to guarantee the debt for a stranger, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and you are caught by what you said, follow my advice and save yourself, for you have placed yourself at a friend's mercy. Now, swallow your pride, go and beg to have your name erased. Don't put it off. Do it now. I don't, don't rest until you do save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. In other words, the, the, the writer of Proverbs is telling us we should be very, very careful when we become guarantor of people's debts, when we sign uh, for people, when uh, maybe a, a friend or a neighbor or a stranger when they need debt somewhere. He's even saying, swallow that pride, go and beg that you will not be, uh, you, you should not sign or go and beg that that person may not make you a guarantor of their debts. He says that you need to fling yourself like a gazelle or like a bird from the trap. The Bible is warning, is warning us about signing debts to strangers, signing debts to anyone. Because at time, even friends, we've ever heard them. You sign a loan or you sign a debt on their behalf because of the trust you have, but by the end of it all, they don't pay. So you end up paying loans for other people. We have many cases of such situations. So the Bible is telling us if we owe or if you sign a debt of somebody else, you are putting yourself in a trap. So we need to be very careful even when it comes to uh, signing debts for other people or else even when it comes to ourselves taking debt on our own behalf, we need to be careful because if we owe someone money, those people, they have power over us and then we become like we are in prison when you are in debt because you will see that person and you fear. A time you want to uh, do something for your own, but you say, what will my um, creditor say? What will they say when they see I'm developing and I've not paid their debt? You end up living like you're in prison. You cannot develop yourself. So when the Bible says that, let us escape like a gazelle. If we can manage not to be in those small debts that accumulate every day, that makes you to live in fear because you don't know when that person will come for his or her uh, debt, then we need to know that if we, if we owe anyone money, we are no longer free. We cannot do anything of our own. We can, we will always be working for those people because when you get a little amount of money, 
Instead of doing something for yourself, you will be rushing to pay a little by a little, and then it will be very difficult. And St. Paul's right to the Romans, chapter 13 and verse 8, let no debt remain outstanding except the debt of uh, the continuing debt of love for one another. So in other words, no other debts because any other debt will become a source of pain, a source of fear, and you will live like a prisoner. Then finally, when we talk about money management, let us make it a habit or our own habit to give. Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Now, the writer of Proverbs, or King Solomon, is reminding us to honor the Lord with whatever we have so that we may receive. I know many people are doubting this thing because we have, have uh, we've got uh, people who are lying, even preachers who are lying to people to bring all the wealth, and again, they remain in poverty. But we need to learn how to give. We need to learn that our priority should be God. Once we get, we've talked of so many other things of managing our money, but the best out of all those that we have learned throughout this week is setting aside a tithe for your God. Tithe will all forever, the, the Bible says, will pro protect all the other earnings that you will be having. It will uh, make sure that you will not, uh, uh, there will be no thieves to destroy what you earn. That God will protect you from sicknesses that comes to destroy you and to make you overspend. So when we talk about giving to God, I know many will look at the other preachers who mislead when it comes to giving, but the word of God, it's ever true. Let us not show lack of trust to God because of what has happened in the past and what has happened in other areas of life where people have been misled. But let us look upon God. God has said that I will bless you when you bring to the storehouse of the Lord. Now, when we fail because of fear of what is happening, when we fail to be a habitual givers, when we fail to become or to make giving our habit, one, we show that we lack trust in God who has protected us in the past. And number two, when we fail to give to God our tithes, it shows that we lack trust in God for his ability to help us through the rough times. Because sometimes we give when life is easy, but when life is very tough, we stop giving our tithes. But whether we are in good financial status or we are in a very difficult moment, let us trust our giving to the house of the Lord, giving open doors for God's blessings. Proverb 22 verse 9, a generous man will himself be blessed for he has shares for his share, oh sorry, a, a generous man will always be blessed for he shares his food with the poor. The Bible is directing us that to have connection with our God, we need to give a tenth of everything that we have. Let us not look at the exploitive gospel that is misleading, but let us look at the word. Who does the Bible say? We need to control our finances, begin by trusting our finances with God, give him a tithe, then follow the other uh, order of managing our money. If the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, according to what one does, and not looking at others are giving a lot, but let us give in accordance to what we get. Our attitude towards money says a lot about our attitude towards God. So let us learn to manage our money and it is not optional. We need to be Christians who are organized with our finances. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.